Steve Stair, Rick Stream, running for St. Louis County Executive. The County Executive Debate continues on KTRS and KTRS.com. Steve Stair. Here again is your moderator, McGraw-Millhaven. Part two of our uh, debate, 2014. Election day is November 4th. Don't forget to vote. We'll start with uh, you, uh, Missouri House Rep. Rick Stream, you're running a commercial that says uh, Steve Stanger has voted with Charlie Dooley 98% of the time. How much of the county's uh, mismanagement, corruption, uh, embezzlement, how much of that is Steve Stanger's fault? Well, I don't know how much uh, of that uh, is Steve Stanger's fault. I, I, I stand by the, the 98%, and I think uh, Steve voted for all of the budgets. He voted for all of the appointments. Uh, he's all, as we know, the county executive proposes legislation. The council votes on it. That's where that comes from. I think what, what it boils down to leadership and management. If you, for instance, have a health department that has uh, one employee embezzles uh, $3 million, <coughs> um, and why, why wasn't there oversight of that uh, department? Uh, once it was discovered, uh, has the council done anything to change the situation? Uh, has anybody been laid off or fired because of that? I mean, we could go down the list of, of, uh, of all the scandals that have occurred. And the county council is, is the oversight uh, organization. They have to make decisions based on whether or not uh, people should be, uh, make recommendations to the, the county executive. And that's, that's what I would say is that um, whether or not uh, Steve was involved in these decisions or not, uh, he certainly could make recommendations to uh, change what's happened, put new people in place, and, uh, and make the changes necessary to move the county forward. Mike Jones is, is Charlie Dooley's <coughs> senior political <coughs> advisor. He has come out and endorsed you. So some would think that you get the Dooley vote and you would be voting the majority of time with, with Charlie Dooley. Well, I don't think so. I mean, uh, first of all, um, uh, people endorse me because they like what I do, what I stand for, and wh what I, what my vision for St. Louis County is. It's not uh, because of what I think they should do or shouldn't do. So if people endorse me, it's because they like who I am, what I've done. I've, like I said, I've got 42 years of leadership and management experience. I have have done this job. I've worked with bureaucracies. I've hired people. I've trained them. I've evaluated them. I've had to fire a few over the years. I know how to manage people. I know how to manage budgets at the federal, the state, and the local level. Uh, I certainly know how to work across the aisle uh, with uh, Democrats and people in the African American community. I can, that's what people like about me, and that's why they're supporting me. Uh, Steve Stanger, the crime lab uh, a contract to the police board president, council members receiving licensing offices, the health department embezzling millions, uh, special deals for the parking garage contracts. You've been sitting on that county council. How much are you responsible for that? Let me respond to you and also respond to Rick. Um, you know, first of all, I don't think that there is a St. Louis Countyan that believes that I voted with Charlie Dooley 98% of the time. I have spent the last six years fighting everything that I thought was inappropriate, and I think everything that voters in St. Louis County thought was inappropriate. And in August, I stepped forward, I ran in the primary against the administration, against Charlie Dooley, and I won. So that era is over. Now, while I was on the St. Louis County Council, I fought a property tax increase that the administration tried to bring forth. I, I, I essentially saved the county parks from half of them being cut. And I did that by working across the aisle. I did the property tax increase fight uh, by working across the aisle. I kept our women's domestic violence shelters open uh, when they were threatened to be closed. I fought the conflicts that you're talking about. I was instrumental in uh, reforming the police board, uh, the conflicts and the corruption that we saw. And, uh, you know, so to say that I think is unfair. I've, I've been probably the loudest critic that 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 the county council has had over the last six years while I've been on there. Now, Rick also talked about balancing the budget and the things that he's done to balance the budget. Well, first of all, we talked about cutting education. And, and this, this job is going to come down to, I mean, I think it's fair to say that both of us are going to be able to balance the budget. It's going to be important how we balance the budget. Rick, through his record, shows that he wants to balance the budget by cutting essential services uh, to our to our needy and also by eliminating things from the budget that benefit our working families. You know, we talked about Medicaid expansion. You know, we talked about, uh, or I should say, declining Medicaid expansion. We, you know, he wants to reduce, he voted to reduce the minimum wage. Uh, tried to raise our sales taxes in Missouri to 10%. 
cut essential programs like Head Start, Circuit Breaker. Once again, failed to fund our schools K through 12. That's how he seeks to balance a budget. And all the while, giving tax breaks of nearly a billion dollars to millionaires and billionaires. We can't have that in St. Louis County. And the other thing that we can't have in St. Louis County is sort of a cavalier approach to turning down federal funds. Those federal funds are what help St. Louis County function. We, we have those federal funds for transportation. We have those federal funds for, for block grants to improve our neighborhoods. We have those federal funds to take care of our needy and poor. All right. Uh, Rick, Rick Stream. Sure. Um, again, what Steve said is uh, misleading at best. Um, we have balanced a budget in the state of Missouri, unlike the federal government where this quote-unquote free money is coming from. Uh, we've balanced a budget in the state of Missouri uh, every year. We've cut spending. We've lowered taxes. We have a AAA bond rating in Missouri, which is one of only seven states to have a AAA bond rating. We've done the job in Missouri uh, with balancing the budget. And frankly, uh, we've increased spending for education every year. We've also increased spending for programs that uh, do help the, the most needy and most vulnerable uh, in, our, in our state as well as in our county. Uh, and I've made a specific point of announcing that year after year. I've put money in the budget, additional money in the budget for the most vulnerable citizens, the developmentally disabled, the mentally ill, the women who've been uh, sexually assaulted and battered, our school districts that are struggling. <clears throat> I've put extra money in the budget to help those school districts and the students that they serve. So to say that uh, we've uh, that I, I've cut things is uh, compatibly untrue. Now, as far as St. Louis County, uh, the county has a budget problem. Uh, they do uh, have overspent. They've have cost overruns. And uh, which need to be addressed. I think uh, when Steve mentioned about saving the parks, I would talk. To, uh, I would ask him to go down to his district and talk to the people in uh, along uh, Telegraph Road, whose park in the residential area was taken, and a police station is being built there. Uh, they are ready to file suit against the county <clears throat> because they think it was a breach of contract to take that park. Uh, so. I think uh, if he if he worked if he talked to the people in his own district who were upset about that the library move, the uh, senior living center that went in there, uh, there are many people in his district who are upset by his actions, apparently not listening to the people in his own district. So I think those uh, those are all issues that I think he's going to have to deal with. On my part, I've clearly uh, managed a budget at, at uh, the state level properly on the school district. We had a, a great budget process, and of course, then uh, the federal government. I'll, uh, uh, Stanger, I'll, I'll let you answer that in, in a question. But if if we're in a budget crisis, Rick Stream, where would you cut? What where would you cut? You're on the budget committee down in Jefferson City. You know this this budget. Give me some specifics of where you would cut in the county budget. Well, first of all, I have talked to people who are in the budget process of the county, and they say that there are millions of dollars that can be saved just through waste and uh, fraud and abuse. And when we're talking about that, we're basically talking about, the, I think the audit that just came out last week that said that when uh, the county went on contract uh, for certain items, the actual cost that came in was many times greater than the, uh, than the bid price. And that's just leadership and management that needs to be addressed uh, when you go through the budget process and the contracting process. I'll have a, I'll have a good focus on, on those areas. We're going to have performance audits of all of our departments. We're going to make sure that the people who are running these departments understand that they're working for the taxpayers of the county, not for themselves, and they are going to have to try to save money wherever they can. More efficient, professional, competent, uh, management is what I'm going to bring to the county government. Stanger, Steve Stanger, go ahead. Well, the first thing that I'm going to do within the first 100 days of my administration is run a full audit of county government. And this is an audit that St. Louis County has not seen, I know, for the last 10 years. Uh, it's a top to bottom audit. It's a full financial audit and a full performance audit to basically delve into every account we have, every program we have. That same accounting firm that will do that work, and, and it, it is not, uh, it's not really an expen a much more expensive audit than we're already doing yearly, and it's essential to root out what, we've, what, we've, what I have identified as waste and, and, and some fraud and abuse. Uh, and it's essential because what we want to do is gather that data. The same accounting firm will take that data and utilize it to streamline our processes, our permitting processes, uh, what businesses, uh, the, the path that businesses follow as they move through St. Louis County government. So that audit has multi multiple functions, and we'll find where, where we have 
you know, what we've identified as waste, uh, where the abuse exists and where fraud exists. And until you sit in that chair, until you are in the county executive's office and, and essentially running the executive branch of government, you know, it's impossible to know those things without an audit. All right. Uh, let's move on to a couple other things. Coming down the pike uh, is a city-county merger or a city-county um, reunification of some kind. However, the town of Fenton, <clears throat> Ellisville, Valley Park, and Baldwin have all voted against any type of reunification or merger. Rick Stream, where are you on this city-county merger? Well, I'm opposed to the city-county merger. I don't think it's the right solution for the problems we have here in St. Louis County right now. We've got massive job loss over the last decade. We've got uh, unemployment at uh, nearly uh, three times what it was in 2000. I think we need to address job uh, growth, economic development. Uh, I think the county government is not being run properly. Uh, we've got inefficient, incompetent, unprofessional, and dishonest uh, management uh, of the county government. I think education issues are, are paramount. We've got uh, a number of our school districts in the North County area that need to be helped and uh, need to improve their performance so that the kids in those districts get uh, access to a high quality education. I don't see that a merger helps any of those issues uh, at this time or in the near future. So I know some people are talking about it, uh, both in the city and the county, uh, but the grassroots people, uh, the people at the grassroots level do not want this. Uh, they don't trust the politicians to make the right choices. If there are areas where we can save money by combining some services between the city and county and within municipalities within the county, then we should pursue those, uh, those options uh, so that we can provide uh, efficient, um, uh, cheaper service to the taxpayers of our, our county. You mentioned uh, in the St. Louis County there is some dishonesty. You want to mention any names or what you were talking about when you well, said I, dishonesty I, I in think, the county uh, government? I, I think what we, were, what we saw in the health department, I think the cost overrun on the, uh, the, uh, ju uh, the uh, criminal building, uh, the, the courthouse building, I think uh, there's a number of scandals that are being under, under investigation. I think that's what we're talking about. Gotcha. I think there's a, a feeling that the county government is just not being run properly. At all. Uh, Rick Stream, where are you on county merger? Are you talking about Steve? I'm, I'm Steve sorry, Stanger. Steve Stanger. Okay, and let me address one point before I do that. Uh, you know, Rick is certainly you know critical of the administration. I've been critical of the administration. I just find it interesting that Rick is also taking help, as you said, in his campaign from the administration, from the likes of uh, Bill Ray, who's on county taxpayer dollars, assisting his campaign. Mike Jones, who's assisting his campaign. And also Pat Washington, who's assisting his campaign. But to address the issue of city county merger, you know, my position has remained consistent throughout. You know, there's probably hundreds of permutations on the way that these matters could be proposed. And I think we need to take each one of those and we need to look at the both, you know, the, the economic impacts and the quality of life impacts. And I've I've broken those down into quantitative impacts and qualitative impacts. And those things need to be examined for any proposal that's made. At this point, there hasn't even been a real proposal made. So we really don't even know what we're saying we either do or don't want. I am in agreement that the, that both the city and the county certainly have their fiscal issues and those things need to be taken into account as well. Um, with respect to Rick's position, you know, I, there's also some other, you know, there's some other things that I also find interesting and that would be that he, he signed on to Joint House Resolution 25. That resolution, and I'd encourage anyone to take a look at it who wants to take a look at it, basically says that with respect to issues of merger and consolidation, if local governments can't take care of those, St. Louis County can't take care of these issues, that the state government would step in and essentially take care of it for us. And I'm absolutely opposed to that. Uh, he's also accepted $100,000 from really the chief proponent of city county merger, yet he, he also says that he's against city county merger. So that's, that's my position. What is your position? Are my you for or against it? My position is that we need to take an analytical approach and not just a gut reaction to it, okay. but to take an analytical approach and, and review uh, what the proposals are that are going to be made. At this point, we don't even have a proposal that's been made. All right, uh, last question, and this is uh, a, a somewhat strange question, but one that is percolating under the surface, and that is uh, St. Louis County at some point was asked originally to fund the Edward Jones Dome to bring the St. Louis Rams here. It's now 20 years later, and the Rams are talking about a new stadium, uh, there's all sorts of rumors of them leaving. We'll start with you, Steve Stanger, and that is, uh, would you like to see the county involved in some way with some type of tax or fund or something to help fund some type of new stadium to keep the Rams here in St. Louis? Well, let me say this first as a matter of priority. I very much would like to see the Rams stay here in St. Louis. That's the first thing that I want to you know, definitely set forth that I support because I do. I think that it, it assists us in being uh, you know, a top-notch city and uh, a destination point. 
you know, when you get to the issue of a tax, you know, that's an issue that voters are going to need to decide. And where we are right now is basically the Rams are here on a, on a essentially because arbitration failed, they're here on a month to month uh, arrangement. And, uh, you know, before would you, we start would you talk- be in favor of a tax? Well, before we start talking about being in favor of a tax or not in favor of a tax, I think we need to see exactly what the Rams are going to be stepping forward with, what the NFL is being stepped forward, you know, what they're going to step forward with. And I think that we need to know those things before we ask our taxpayers to step forward and incur additional funds to buy yet another facility. Rick Stream, would you, would an administration that you run in the county be sympathetic to the Rams building a new stadium? Well, I would certainly like to see the Rams stay here. There's no question about that. I think everybody in the uh, in the metropolitan area would love to see them stay here. I think we'd have to look at all the options, though. I mean, you just can't uh, willy-nilly throw money away uh, at, at specific uh, sports franchises without uh, determining what the cost is to the taxpayers. So let's look at all the options, see what uh, what is on the table, uh, see if the, if the league steps in, what the Rams are going to offer to pay before we make any decisions. All right, that uh, is it. We are out of time. Uh, a quick one minute, 90 seconds uh, closing, and we'll uh, start with you, Steve Stanger. Well, McGraw, there's uh, a decision that needs to be made on November 4th, and that decision is who is going to be the leader of a million people in St. Louis County. Uh, and... It is an extraordinarily important decision where we are right now in St. Louis County because we have been stagnant for the last 10 years and it is time for St. Louis County to move forward. The events of Ferguson have demonstrated even further that we need to move forward together. It needs to be uh, a moving forward that involves all of St. Louis Countyans. And I believe that I can provide the leadership that we need to move forward in, in the areas of economic development, economic opportunity for everyone. And I think that a real choice needs to be made and it's framed in terms of a choice. Uh, you know, certainly both of us are gonna be able to balance a budget, but it's gonna be really what's most important is how we are going to balance that budget. Are we going to include everyone moving forward or are we gonna balance a budget on the backs of our needy and on uh, working people in St. Louis County? I think that Rick Stream has voted a number of times um, and has in, in Jefferson City. And those votes have done damage to St. Louis County. I think it's done damage to our economic development, and there has been no economic development uh, that has come out of Jefferson City that, that has uh, benefited St. Louis County. And you're motioning me that I'm running out of time, but I think a choice needs to be made, and I think I can provide the leadership necessary to move forward. House, um, uh, Missouri House Representative Rick Stream, you'll get the last word. Thanks, McGraw. Thanks for having us on this morning. Uh, this is a historic time for St. Louis County. We, have, uh, we are at a crossroads where we're going to have to make a very uh, important decision on who leads the county for the next uh, four years. Um, we do have uh, a problem with job growth in this county. We do have a problem with uh, education not uh, being fair across the board for students. We do have a problem with inefficient, e uh, incompetent, unprofessional, and dishonest government uh, in, in Clayton. I think we, the people of uh, this county deserve to have somebody who is a proven leader, uh, and I think I'm that person. I've got 42 years of leadership and management experience, starting as a naval officer in 1972, 29 years as a budget project manager for the Department of Defense, 12 years on the Kirkwood School Board, uh, two years as president, and eight years in the legislature, six as the budget uh, chairman and vice chairman. I have support across all sections of St. Louis County, south, west, central, and north, among Democrats, independents, and Republicans, uh, white and black and other races. They are all supporting me because they recognize that I am the true leader who can bring change, a uh, fresh new start to St. Louis County, uh, not the same old uh, play that we've always had. So I think um, I look forward to their support on November the 4th. That is Missouri House Representative Rick Stream, Republican, along with St. Louis County Council Member Steve Stanger. Election Day is November 4th. This has been the St. Louis County Executive Debate 2014, KTRS St. Louis.